Okay, we're live, everybody. <laughs> All right, it looks like I will be right have... back. Okay, it looks like we have about 10 people on. Yeah, so we'll probably start, David. Yeah, and then you can just come on. All right. So, Hannah, people actually, they're hearing me now that they're coming in. They should be. Um, can folks maybe type in the chat, maybe where you are zooming in from, just to make, um, just for us to make sure that the chat is working and that you can hear us. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Okay. See who we have on. Oh, hello. Yeah, we've got a good crew already. All right. So we'll wait maybe just two more minutes. I know there are probably another you know, 15 people who had registered. Um, and then we'll get going. So hello, everyone. Great. All right, well, I suppose we can let people start trickling in. So we might as well go ahead and get started. So so thanks everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. You know, it's good to, to see all of you on the webinar. Um, if some of you have signed up for the second one, this is gonna be the same content. So um, you may not wanna attend the second one unless you want just a refresher from, from today. Um, yeah, so um, we're really excited to get going with the loon breeding season this year. We have reports coming in of loons returning to many places. We lost our recording. Oh, there we go. Okay, um, yeah, just so you know, this is being recorded. Um, yeah, so we got our first raft out of the season and I see um, the person we were working with on the call today. So if you don't know me, um, my name is Tracy Hart and I am a conservation biologist with Maine Audubon. And I also coordinate the Maine Loon Restoration Project. Um, and I'm here with several people who are part of the project. Um, Tony Rabasco and David Morrill are going to be co-presenting with me. And they are both new seasonal biologists on, um, on the Mainland Restoration Project. Um, we also, I, I don't know if she's on yet, but Maggie Welch is supposed to be joining us. Oh, she, there she is. Yep, Maggie is here. So she's supposed to be joining us as one of our partners on the project. And she's from Lakes Environmental Association. So some of you may be working with her if you're in like the Bridgeton, Naples area. Um, and Olivia Scott will be, uh, is on the call as well. And she's also one of the seasonal biologists this year. And Hannah Young, who many of you know from the, the Maine Loon Count. Um, oh, and I just see that Sally Stockwell's on too. She's our conservation of, uh, our director of conservation at Maine Audubon. So welcome everyone. Um, just to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, this is a webinar format, so you won't be able to speak for the, the portion of the pre presentation. So that will be about 45 minutes long, and then we'll hope to open it up to questions then. Um, in the meantime, you can um, put your questions and any comments you have in the question and answer. Um, there's also a chat if you want to speak amongst yourself, but we'll be looking at the Q&A at the end to answer questions. So please put anything you'd really like us to address in there. And if you can't see that, um, most of you will have a bar with all kinds of tools on there and it'll, it'll say Q&A. But if you don't see that, just move your, um, your mouse around and it should pop up somewhere. Um, so let us know if you have any trouble with that. Um, okay, so that's great. So we're really excited to talk today about a part of the Mainland Restoration Project, um, the monitoring portion of it. And that's really vital to help us know how well our loon protection efforts are working. So uh, with that, we'll get, we'll get going. Um, let's see. Somehow my slides aren't advancing, but I'll try it this way. Ah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so this, like I mentioned, this is mo the monitoring section of our project is part of an overall project that we call the Mainland Restoration Project. And um, we are several partners uh, working together 
on uh, a project that's focused on increasing loon productivity and nesting success and decreasing loon mortality. Uh, so the partners, it's a five-year collaboration that's led by Maine Audubon, and it involves Maine Lakes, Lakes Environmental Association, the Penobscot Nation as our main partners on the project. And we work in close co collaboration with Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. And the whole project is funded by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service trustees through an oil settlement fund. Um, and there are four main ways that we're trying to increase productivity and decrease mortality of loons. Um, one is placing nesting rafts. Um, the other is trying to monitor the success of those rafts and of nesting signs um, and how well they are helping to hatch chicks. Uh, the, the other one is nest protection uh, through signs and through outreach. And also we're trying to reduce mortality through fish-led free efforts. And outreach is also important in trying to reduce um, disturbance and the number of, of boat strikes that happen. So, so that's the overall project, but today we're focused on just one piece and that's how you can help us monitor reproductive success and survival of looting, uh, loon breeding pairs and, and the resulting loon families that are on your lake and pond. Um, so here's an overview of what we're going to discuss today. So this webinar is really all about the, the why, the what, the when, the where, and the how of how to monitor nesting success of a breeding loon pair. Uh, it's, it's really targeted to those who've already uh, are part of the project and have nesting rafts or nesting signs out on your, your lake, um, or those who we're working with this year to receive either signs or, or rafts. Um, and for some of you, you can get involved in the monitoring by helping us to track nesting success to see if there's a pair that might be a good fit for either a sign or a raft. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about the why monitoring is vital to the uh, success of rafts and nesting signs and ensuring that those efforts are really helping to, to help loon productivity and survival more than, more than any types of, more than they hurt those actions. Um, and then I'll also be talking about what to monitor. So what should you be focusing on when you're out on the water? And when, so how often and what time of year should you go out? So that's what I'll be covering. And then I'll be turning it over to David and Tony to talk about how. So how often should you survey? Um, and how do you go about doing conducting a survey? And how do you do that responsibly? Okay, so first the why, the big question is so why are we asking you and your team to put in time into surveying a, pair, a breeding pair of loons on your lake? Um, the short answer is that monitoring is a really critical part of making sure our actions help instead, uh, instead of harm and to be able to adjust our actions as threats and situations change. So your help is really vital. Um, our overall goal, goal, if you remember, is to increase loon productivity and and loon survival. So with rafts, we're trying to help out a pair that continuously struggles and fails to hatch chicks and by addressing some of the causes of nest failure. And with nesting signs, we're trying to reduce disturbance at nest sites that are at risk of failing due to human intrusions. Um, and we can only know if our efforts are working through surveying. So monitoring lets us know how our collective efforts are working to improve nesting success and reduce threats. So I'll just give you a couple of examples of how monitoring can be important. So, so one um, is monitoring can help you know, catch um, issues with rafts and signs. Um, we're all here because we wanna help loons and rafts and signs can be really beneficial, but at the same time, things can and, and do go wrong with rafts. We've seen a few things already that we've, we've addressed. Um, so signs have their pros and cons. Also, as what well, they might attract more attention to the nest. So monitoring is really the way we can minimize the risks by catching and addressing problems that arise. Um, so for example, if a, you can see in these pictures, um, the wake continue, can continue to be a problem if the raft isn't well placed. Um, and also raccoons, yeah, this is a picture, it's a hard picture to see, but predators can still get to rafts sometimes. Um, so this, you, know, you hope that a raft will move the nest far enough offshore that a, a predator can't get to it, but sometimes that happens. So if we find out about what these issues are, there are some ways that we can help retrofit the situation or move the raft to a better location. 
Um, so, and also other things like if a corner sinks on a raft, we can pop some flotation under it. So, so we're hoping you don't do those things yourselves. Um, if, if loons have started nesting, you know, please call us and we can see if there's any possibility of making those fixes. But um, yeah, so um, the other picture I have here is, is showing um, where, what a ideal situation is for a raft. Uh, how deep the water should be and how far shore in a protected cove. So monitoring also gives us a chance to see if the raft is still in a protected cove, if it's out of prevailing wind and waves, um, if it's not in the way of recreation or anglers, if it's not in the path of boat wakes, if it's well anchored, it's really secure, and if it's in water that's deep enough that it can still um, float and rise and fall with waves. And, uh, and it gives us a chance to make sure that the anchor lines aren't so taut that it's sinking the raft. So yeah, so it's really monitoring is very important for the success of, of rafts. Um, also, it helps us track nesting success, so which is our, our major goal of the project. Um, so this um, right here, so our, we wanna know if rafts and nests are helping to hatch more chicks. Um, and the only way we're gonna know that if they're helping and if it's working, is by tracking their breeding success and their survival over the season. Um, so questions like, are they using the raft? Did they hatch a chick? Are people respecting nesting signs? So monitoring really helps us catch all those key events. Um, and so just to let you know like how monitoring is helping us so far and what it's telling us, I have a graph here, which uh, I won't go over in full, but it does show some of what we're learning from the monitoring that happened last year. <clears throat> Last year, we put out 27 rafts. Um, so down at the bottom of the screen, that's the total rafts. Um, and nine of those got used, which is actually, uh, it's telling us that uh, loons are taking to our rafts more quickly than we expected. So it can take one, three, even six years for loons to start using rafts, but we had a third of them used last year. So, so we're all doing something right. We're either choosing the right pairs uh, or you know, we're doing the right things with the rafts. So that's a good sign. Um, it also, we found out that in the beginning, when we before we started putting the rafts out, uh, we had really low productivity. So, oops, oh, I, sorry, I went to the wrong one. Yeah, we had low productivity to only about 0.1 chicks were hatching for each pair each year. And then once we put in a raft, the ones that use the rafts, about seven fold. So we increased their productivity about you know, seven times if they chose to use the raft. So it's a good sign that at least this first year, our, our efforts are working. Um, and there's some other real benefits to having you out there. You know, you're the eyes and ears out there. You play a really critical role in reporting issues that are happening and letting us know what the breeding story is for, for that pair. Uh, and then lastly, uh, tracking threats. So this is a monitoring really helps us know if the raft or the sign we have out there is addressing the threat. And then threats change. So, um, you know, we want to continuously know if our actions are addressing threats. So maybe uh, a dam was fixed and nest flooding is no longer an issue. So in that case, we might be able to actually pull the raft if, if, we, if the threat isn't there anymore. So rafts are meant to get loons through the hard times. Um, so, and maybe now there's some more motor boats or wake boats on your pond. So our raft might still be needed because of they rise and fall with boat wakes, but you might also need to consider education such as about wake laws or, or raising awareness about how vulnerable loons are on the nest. Yeah, so those are some three really big whys as to why we're asking you to get out there and, and help us know how well rafts and signs are doing and which pairs are, are vulnerable. Um, so then the question is what to monitor. So in a nutshell, these surveys were asking you to focus on one pair of loons on your lake or pond and any chicks that they produce. Uh, so you'll, you'll be gathering information that to tell this breeding pair's story. Um, we're focusing on pairs specifically where we placed rafts or considering for a raft or a sign. Uh, and we're specifically focusing on pairs that have repeatedly tried to nest and failed and have failed due to reasons that we can help address through this project. 
Um, so you can, you know, everyone's always asking me, you know, can I jot down other loons? I'm out there, I'm seeing all these other loons. Should I jot that down? And you can monitor other adult loons that are there and you can even submit that data so we can learn more about the lake. But our focus and the data that we're gonna be tracking is really about these, these pairs where we have rafts and signs out. Um, yeah, so what are we actually tracking? So some of the information that we're gonna be trying to get through these surveys, um, we wanna know if they are nesting on the raft or not. Are they using it? Are they nesting at all? Maybe they're not choosing the raft, but they've found another natural site. Uh, the number of chicks that are hatched by this pair and the number of chicks that survive to at least six weeks of age. So that's the time when if they make it to six weeks, uh, most biologists think that's pretty likely that they'll actually get to the point where they can fledge off the lake when they're 12 weeks or older. Um, the number of nest failures and the reasons for nest failure. And then uh, really important too is tracking incidents of disturbance. We wanna know what's happening to these loons that might be causing nest failure. So, so that is what we're trying to track. And then David's gonna be going into a lot more about uh, how we do that. Um, so one question you might ask is how this is different than the annual loon count. So many of you are involved in the loon count and found this project through, through your involvement in the loon count, um, which for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's a, a census that happens on the third Saturday of July each year. That's a, a snapshot of the population at the same time each year. And it's a really vital thing for estimating and tracking the breeding population in Maine and deciphering long-term trends. Um, but the monitoring we're doing through this project is a bit different. Uh, it's focusing on behaviors and nesting success rather than number of loons and chicks. It's uh, focusing on a single pair rather than on counting all the loons in your survey area. It's for the entire breeding season versus just once a year. And this monitoring really helps us find out which loons need our help and how rafts and signs are working. Um, so it serves a, a different purpose, but uh, you know, more or less important, but this project just provides a new opportunity to learn more about breeding success on individual lakes and to target our protection efforts. Okay, and then, um, so when to do the surveys and, and who should be involved. Uh, so this monitoring is done by local volunteers. So many of you on this call, uh, individuals, lake associations, teams, neighbors, um, all can be involved in this. Um, and it uh, often takes a village to be able to complete all these monitoring surveys. Um, and so you'll be doing this though with our training and support. So including this webinar, and then we also do on-site training. So when we come to help you deploy your raft or put out a sign, um, we will help you and give you some training on how to do monitoring and how to read loon behaviors. And then we'll also come out one to two times during the season to check in and see how things are going. So you won't be alone in this. Um, and what we're looking for are weekly surveys. Um, and at the very least, once every two weeks. And the timing of that is starting in May, or as soon as you can, as soon as it's safe in spring, that's great, and going through August, um, or even preferably to when the chicks leave the lake or the pond in fall or, or winter. Um, so, but we're hoping you at least go through when the chicks are six weeks old, if they hatch a chick. So yeah, it is really helpful to have a team and to get creative to find help if you need it. Um, so now I'm going to turn this over to David to talk more about how you how to do the surveys, and I'll be monitoring the chat and the Q and A from here forward. And yeah, so thanks so much, everyone. Looking forward to having you involved. Uh, so let me stop sharing my screen. All right. First things first. Can everyone hear me? Thumbs up with the my fellow panelists. I can hear. Yep. Okay, I'll cool. mute myself now. Yeah. Awesome. And I, I did also see some people have been throwing in questions in the chat uh, or the Q&A section. That's fantastic. Keep doing that too. And if we don't answer it right away, it might come up later or it might be something that we'll wait till the end to sort of discuss um, in a bit more detail. But keep throwing that. We love to hear those questions. But give me one sec while I just set up my shared screen now. Um,
Oh, okay. Well, let me just skip through some things really quickly. We've already learned about all of this. And fabulous. Okay. So first off, again, I wanted to thank Tracy for that beautiful introduction. That was a great way of introducing our project and going over sort of some of the purposes that we're going to be doing. Um, my name is David again, and I will be discussing more how you can help us gather this important information. Um, so first I'll introduce the surveys and go over how to fill them out. And then we'll delve a little bit into loon behaviors. Um, and like we mentioned earlier, our goal is to reduce disturbances and threats to nesting loons. And it's important we do that. Um, we don't contribute to their distress and we can ensure this by monitoring responsibly. So, in most cases, you won't be able to complete these surveys from shore, so you'll need some type of watercraft to do a thorough survey. A canoe or a kayak work great, um, and as such, one of the most important supplies is safety equipment. So a life jacket or personal flotation device are pretty much required when we're doing these uh, kind of surveys. We'll also need something to write with and to write on, like a clipboard, binoculars, uh, a reference sheet and survey forms to record any observations. And things like cameras with a good lens for taking pictures from a distance or a cell phone for marking points on Google Maps, they're not required, but they can come in handy. Um, and to record these observations and data we used, you will need a survey form. To access these forms, um, all of these resources that you may need for monitoring can be found on the raft monitoring resource section of the project website listed right up here. Um, and we will also throw these links down in the Q&A section later on, so you'll have uh, a repository of them if you want to go and check them out later on. Um, the primary document you'll need is the survey form. To access these forms, click the link of the main common loon breeding survey form under raft monitoring, uh, raft monitoring resources, and find your lake-specific survey form in the folder and print this out. You can also enter your data with the Survey123 app which is an online way of entering data. And to do so, you must click the enter your data online link here instead. Make sure to familiarize yourself with the survey instructions by following the links under monitoring protocols and print them out before conducting any surveys to ensure we all monitor responsibly. Additionally, we have some changes to our survey forms from the last year, and we encourage everyone to review these protocols. Additional resources here include what we like to call a monitoring reference sheet or a guide, which you can bring with you into the field. Don't worry, they're all laminated, so you don't have to worry about it getting wet. Um, it contains pictures and descriptions on the front and back to help you answer survey questions such as how to know if you have a territorial pair, how old a chick is, um, and we'll go over how to use this guide a, a, a little bit later in, in more depth. And these are just a few of the multitude of resources we have to help you learn more about loons so you can become a better surveyor. So it's all for our benefit. But since we're ready to head out, what does a survey involve? Well, first things first, we want us to check the weather. Oh, the link's fabulous. Thank you for doing that, Tracy. First things first, to check the weather. Your safety is more important than any data. Secondly, our survey areas on a smaller pond with only one breeding pair, the survey area is gonna be the whole pond. So just survey that whole pond. But on larger lakes with multiple pairs, you may have to cover a larger area to hone in on the area of the pair frequency. Start by looking into areas where you have seen the pair in the past, focus on the areas where they spend most of their time, but also look for the farthest locations where they are to get a sense of their range. Travel along the shoreline and around any islands, um, which are frequent uh, habitats that they um, hang out in. And when you locate the pair, watch them with binoculars from a distance long enough that you can see behaviors that help you confirm they are a pair and not competing loons, and if they started nesting or not. Look for any clues about your own disturbances as well, and back off if you see any of those signs of distress, which again, we'll talk about in a little bit more detail. Oh, can you guys still hear me? Okay, good. All right. So how long should your survey be? Survey only as long as you need to fill out the survey form. Survey times can vary throughout the season. And at first, you'll be looking to identify if a pair is a breeding pair, also known as a territorial pair. We use those terms interchangeably. Um, but if you see a breeding or territorial pair is present, figuring out where they spend most of their time, watching them for courtship and territorial behaviors, and if they're testing out nesting sites like our rafts. 
As a result, your survey may take more time at this point in the season than later on. Um, the surveys conducted from mid-May through mid-June are going to be a little quicker and less, less time consuming because many pairs are nesting and laying eggs by this time in the season. So surveyors can paddle to a location that offer a good view from a safe distance of the nest. You may still need to search a bit to locate the member of the pair that's not on the nest. In this case, for this example, we can see that we have a territorial pair down on the raft here and their other partner is way up further over here. Um, so just be aware that sometimes you may need to search a little bit more for that second pair. And since incubation period is about a month long, you can start seeing chicks hatching by early as mid-June, and loons get very sensitive during this time. So just remember to keep your distance. Moving forward between mid-June through late July, eggs will typically begin to hatch. Chicks leaving the nest right away or ch sorry, chicks leave the nest right away after hatching and parents will take them to a foraging area. Observe the chicks as they grow. If they abandon the nest, keep monitoring to locate the pair if they're still together, because they may uh, nest a second time. While loons only raise one clutch, which is up to two eggs per year, if a loon fails early on in their first nesting attempt, they will often re-nest. Sometimes if they're early enough, they can nest up to three times in one season. So in this case, hatching can extend out until later into July or even into August. And finally, when we're filling out and recording all this information, we will be using that survey form like we mentioned earlier. Um, this survey form will help guide you in your survey as well as directing you on what information to collect. This example only applies to a single survey form, but we do have a survey forms that allow you to record observations for up to three dates on one form. If you would like that, let us know and we'll find and get you those resources. But for now, for the demonstration purposes, we're just going to use a single survey uh, form. So again, like we mentioned earlier, finding those lakes, uh, finding those survey forms from the lake specific survey link. Um, please make sure that you download the lake with your with your your lake, which will include the lake name the Midas number, these four little digits right here. Um, and there is also a generic form available if you can't find your specific form um, or for your specific lake or pond um, that you can still fill out later. And again, you can find all that information for Midas number and other things like that from the uh, Lakes of Maine website, which will also be thrown in that Q&A link later on. Um, secondly, we would ask that you please name your pair um, with a descriptive name that you can use throughout the season. Um, typically, people will name them for a Green Island pair or um, a Back Cove pair, something that gives them a bit more indication that it's that local pair that they can recognize. We also make sure you include your own name, the number of observers, and your contact info, as well as the date that you are surveying. Next, we're asking you to map your observations. Now, this will be a little bit, a little bit easier because these maps are incorporated into our survey forms this year. Um, and we, exact, we ask that when you observe the same pair, same loon pair or a family each time that you survey just that one pair. If you do decide to survey another pair, we ask you to fill out a separate survey form. Several things we wanna track the locations of on these maps are the location of adults, um, chicks, nests, rafts and unused rafts. And again, like we were saying earlier, we ask that you only record one pair. However, if there is interaction with another pair or another loon, that is the only time that we would ask for you to include a third, that third other loon um, in the single survey forms. The first thing we want to mark on our map is where you observed a member of the breeding pair. And we're gonna use the symbol T to indicate that. So you can see those, these two pairs right here. An important thing, to, important question to ask is, how do you know if it's a breeding pair and not a non-breeding adult loon or two loon competitors? And the answer is sometimes you won't, but you can verify that information. Um, you can verify it's an adult loon due to the characteristically, characteristically distinct black and white plumage they carry. The younger loons will be much more gray and brown. And we ask you to also record this and any other behavioral clues that you, cues that you might see that will help us differentiate a territorial pair from um, an unattached loon pair. 
And to give you a bit more information on that, a territorial pair or breeding pair consists of two adult loons that are observed together, interacting over a multi-week period and defending an area from other loons. Territorial behaviors include, and are kind of listed up here in this guide, which is that staff ref or the, that uh, monitoring reference guide we mentioned earlier. Um, so these behaviors can include sudden or simultaneous dives, splash dives, chases, wing rowing, um, attacks, circling, rapid bill dippings, um, or other aggressive behaviors indicating that two loons may oppose each other and may not be a pair. And to give you a bit more of an in-depth look at this, I have a quick video. So let's see if I can do this correctly. I believe that this is all set up. And can everyone still see my screen? Thumbs up, Tracy, if that's all good. OK, fabulous. And let me know if you can hear or not, too. Hmm. No. No audio? Yeah, we're not seeing the video. Not seeing the video? No. Hmm. OK. Um, I could potentially try it from mine if you want. Can you see this? Am I still sharing my screen right now? All we're seeing is um, the the slideshow, but not on on presentation mode. So hmm. we're seeing your notes and sometimes you have to reshare your screen, like if you're switching yeah. web browsers. Does that I help? believe I'm just going to stop sharing and then reshare my screen again. Can you see this? Yes. Okay, fabulous. So let's go. Let's try this again. So here we just have starting off with some common foraging behavior you might see pretty relaxed. Um, we we'll also notice that the loons in their necks are in that very relaxed position, hanging back. Um, they don't seem to be in really too much distress. But as this one progress or as this video progresses, we can start to hear some of the other indicators. So we got the tremolo um, indicating that one loon is sort of calling out. Now we can start seeing more of that riding low concerned behavior the mom wait, is sort of david wait one second we can't hear anything i wonder if there's a way to uh, no can't hear no oh. so, sometimes you do have when you share a video you have to enable um mm -hmm. sound hmm. Hmm. well we might have to do it without what I can do is I can we can link the um, video in, in the Q and A section as well too. So for people if they want to try and follow along as we're going along quickly, or they can um, access it later on, I think would be a great idea too to get more of those audio indicators. But at least for the visually, what a some of these territorial behaviors might look like, um, I might Someone just. Someone said that they can hear it, so I guess it's just me who can't hear the video. So that's good. Okay. <laughs> Well, okay. if you can, if you can hear it, fantastic. If you can't, um, we will link the video to give you that audio cues later on. But really quickly, like we were saying earlier, this is more of that riding low behavior. You can see that our 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 mother loon here has got that neck kind of compressed down. It's really scrunched up, and she's really trying to make herself invisible on the water surface. You can also see young chicks, young, very young chicks, because they're riding on the mother's back. A very good indicator that they're very young, maybe ten days old. Um, and we can tell that the mother here, though, is still kind of concerned with something else going on. Um, and we'll sort of see what that is in a minute as this video progresses. So yes, as our video indicates, uh, taking advantage of a free ride. And this is kind of this, so we really call the stashing behavior where the mother leaves the chicks. So sometimes you may see chicks free floating and that may be okay um, behavior uh, for, for our loon pairs. Um, but now we can start to see a introduction of a third loon and this circling behavior we mentioned earlier, kind of starting to see a little bit more of aggression coming out. Um, a little bit more of these Here's, here's a great video of that circling behavior where they're all kind of looking, eyes locking. You can see that their heads are furrowed. And then on the left here, you might get a chance to see what we like to call a penguin dance, where they sort of walk on their back legs and heels right there, out of their pair, 
that is a sign of a serious territorial behavior right there to some kind of distress. And considering that they're fighting, I would say that they probably are pretty in distress. So I'll stop my video for now. Like I said, we'll link that in later on if you would like to see um, if you would like to see that in its full completion, I highly encourage you to do it. has a great uh, examples of a lot of those behavioral traits we were talking about. Um, but I'm going to continue on with the rest of our presentation just so I know we're a little tight for time. Okay. Okay, so outside of territorial, um, behaviors, we also can indicate, uh, other behaviors can indicate um, that it is a breeding pair if we have courtship behaviors. Um, so some examples of this include exchanging of whales or hoots and synchronized movements around their territory, especially concerning relaxed foraging. Um, things like synchronized swimming, synchronized diving, build displays, and even other things like mating, oh, mating, um, Mating or exploring of nest sites um, are a couple of the other indicators of courtship behaviors. All right. <clears throat> so if you do notice any of these uh, any of these behaviors, we do have sections on our survey form for you to fill out um, when you notice them. So mark any of the behaviors you observe on the form to help us confirm that this is a likely pair or a pair and arrival. Many of these behaviors we have already gone over, and this survey just simply models how to record um, a head raised alert uh, behavior that you might see on a loon. If you observe a loon with a strand extended neck, mark the appropriate box on your behavior observed. So head raised alert, nice little check here. Um, and you can that will be all you need to do for any of the behaviors. Mark any and all you see. Um, but be, Tony will go a bit more into those stress behaviors later on um, to give you a better understanding of what they would look like and how to get them out. Okay, as we continue on by late May, you may start seeing a loon on the raft or on a natural nest incubating eggs. Indicate an R if they're nesting on a raft, like we can see here, or an N if they're on a natural nest. <clears throat> And it can be rather difficult to notice if a loon is using the raft. It's not always that easy to tell. Um, so particularly sensitive pairs may have left as soon as you approach. Um, so some loons may be off the nest for a time. When this happens, we ask that you, A, do not approach the raft, especially after early into mid-May. If there are no loons on the raft, look for eggs with binoculars. And if you don't see any binoculars, call it an unused raft for this survey, but keep watching and be willing to amend your answers over more surveys if you see anything that uh, showcases something different. During this time, you want to record the nesting activity during each survey. Um, so record the nesting activity like, you do, like you've done before by checking the appropriate boxes. For example, if you see um, loons on the shore for a short period of time, you can check exploring nesting slash testing nest sites. If you see eggs on the nest once or a loon was on the nest each survey and is now gone, you would like to check empty nest. Or if you find floating eggs, eggshells, or the eggs are now missing, you can also check that fifth box eggs missing uh, or empty nest. If they abandon the nest, they may try again. So if a pair is an unsuccessful once, keep watching them and look again for courtship and territorial behaviors. If they try nesting again in the same or new location, check re-nesting and mark that, on the, uh, mark that appropriate location on the map. And finally, we'd ask you for you to make sure you include circle which stage of development the chicks are at. To determine this, we can use this slide um, or our staff reference field guide like we talked about earlier. But to give you a little overview, um, in the earliest weeks, chicks may ride on a parent's back if um, they are covered in fluffy, dark, downy feathers um, or light brown down with a white belly. They're about a third in the length of an adult. Um, and if you see chicks riding on a parent's back, that is a firm indicator that it is a young chick because they are only able to do that when they're less than 10 days old. Chicks rapidly mature between mid-June through late July, and surveys taken during this time frame may document chicks ranging from small young to large young. 
Chicks in the small young stage are a third, two thirds of the adult length, have a mix of that brown down and smooth gray contour feathers and are about four to 10 weeks old. As we go along in the season, chicks seen in August and later will normally be in the large category unless re-nesting has delayed the hatching date. So these chicks are typically two thirds of the adult length, full covering of light and dark gray feathers, no down feathers anymore. They're still cared for by their parents, but by week 12, they will be fully matured. And again, just for your own reference, this is the um, reference guide we had mentioned earlier, and these are the same information indicated here, but just for your convenience as well. And we ask for you to complete monitoring, um, continue it for at least six, or, sorry, Monitor service should continue until the chicks have flown away from the lake or at about six weeks old through August or sometimes later. Um, and so that can come, that covers the front side of our form. I know it's a lot of information, but you'll definitely be able to work through it pretty quickly. And Tony will now come hop in and show us what the back will look like. Awesome, thank you. Just gonna share my screen. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Tracy and David, for all that very helpful information. So I will continue to talk about how to fill out the surveys, but also how to evaluate habitat for potential, for potential nesting failures and for reporting any incidents. Um, so this is the second half of the form. It's right on the back when you flip it over. It's really important to fill out the back side so we can just have complete information on each territory. And this side of the form captures and summarizes key dates and numbers and events. So this first circle here, it shows, for example, when the loon started sitting on the nest, when the first check, when the first chick was sighted, and when they started renesting after a failed attempt. And also, um, numbers such as total eggs lagged um, is an important concept to put on this, and it's important to not approach the nest too close and make sure to use binoculars when doing so, because the loon nest and success is much more important than the data. So here is what a photo of what loon eggs will look like. Um, again, never approach them too close um, and just get the best accurate data that you can get with binoculars and making sure to not um, disrupt the adults and leaving the eggs in a vulnerable situation. And so also we want to record important events like loon harassment, injury, or deaths on the lake. Um, and so on the back of the form, we also have the Warren's number. And if you find a dead or injured loon, or if any actions um, that was caused towards the loon to like leave the nest, endure harassment or death, um, please also give us a call. And um, when alerting of these um, incidents, it's really important to try to get pictures as best as you can, just so we have better documentation. Um, and this section of our back of the side of the form replaces our incidents report from last year. And this upper right-hand section, if, um, if a nest is abandoned or the eggs don't hatch, um, this is another example of when you would take photos, again, without getting too close to the eggs. And if you do think a nest is abandoned, it's really important to not collect the eggs and just please leave them um, where they are. Um, and if you have any clues as to why the chicks didn't hatch, this is where you would mark it. So I know it's hard to kind of piece together the puzzle and try to figure out um, why a nest was abandoned or why um, loon eggs have failed. But some examples of that could be if you hear loons and commotion the night, that could have been predation or you could witness a bird attack on the nest. Or if you know that the lake level tends to fluctuate a lot, that could be another reason. Um, so those are just all um, examples of those. This uh -huh. top left photo. Oh. Oh. You keep freezing a little bit, Tony. So hopefully, 
Hopefully you'll stay. It, oh, if you, okay. If you do a cutout for good, we'll, we'll take over. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so, um, and then assess a nest and success and failure. So these are some examples of photos you can take. So the upper left-hand one is of a flooded nest. And then this lower right-hand one, it's a nest strand in. So a loon was trying to push itself out of the mud when the water level decreased. And you can see it's the path that it pushed itself along. Um, so yeah, causes of nest failure, it could be predation, fluctuate in water levels, boat wake, human disturbances. And sometimes we won't be able to determine um, the exact cause, but with detailed notes and pictures, it really helps us piece the puzzle together. And any information on a site is really valuable. Um, and again, if you do see abandoned eggs, please just leave them there and to not collect them. And we also have a lot more information on this on our website too, if you want to get more details about it. And then this is where the comments section, and this is where you would put any details that you might um, help to help us decipher what happened and any key additions to the stories. And then also please be sure to send us photos, um, whether that's just of like the nest in sight or um, a habitat disturbance. Um, we think it's like really helpful as a tool to piece together the story, but also just as a learning lesson. And if we ever do use any of your photos, we will be sure to ask for your permission before we ever use them. And so submitting the data, we have both a paper form and an, on, and an online option. If you do choose the paper form, um, please be sure to mail the survey form um, at least once per month. Um, and you can choose whatever data form that you would be most comfortable using. And so the online data entry, you can enter your survey data online and it'll help us a lot in managing the data and we really appreciate it. Um, the link to our online data entry form is included in this monitoring instructions, and I've also included the link here. Um, and once we come to on site with you to build the raft and deploy it, we will be sure to go over and review the online data entry portal if you're interested in that. Um, so you will be provided some additional training. And when you're filling out this survey, it's really important to um, hit the submit button at the end. So we make sure that we retrieve your data um, and you can definitely just get in touch with us if you need anything corrected or updated. And this form um, was approved, improved a lot from last year and made a lot more simplified. And I also just wanna say a huge thanks to Maggie Welch from like Environmental Association because she worked really hard on this form um, and she created the whole thing. So it's very helpful. And thank you so, so much. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, and so how to serve you responsible, responsibly? Loons are parents too. And before you head out, just remember to survey with caution, um, especially when, they're, when the chicks are incubating and during hatching periods, because they are particularly really sensitive to disturbance. So just please, for the safety of you and for the loans, make sure you're kept at a healthy distance and collecting all this data with the use of binoculars. And so um, with that too, when you're going out into the field, it's really important to familiarize yourself with resources before heading out to monitor. Um, so all volunteers will be provided with this behavior brochure. It can also be printed from the website. Um, the link is more on loon behavior. We'll take you to the website with videos and photos of the behaviors and what they mean. Um, and during these surveys, it's important to recognize um, these behaviors. And if your presence evokes any type of concerned or stress response that you should move away. Um, and there's balloons in your safety are again, more important. And also um, I put a link below um, where it says loon behaviors, images and videos. The Loon Preservation Committee has a really helpful template too of um, just overviewing each of the behaviors. So it's really helpful. Um, and yeah, and also during your survey, 
You want to make any marks of any stress behaviors directed at you or someone on the lake on the front of the monitoring form. Um, so I'll get more into these, but some examples of that could be head down on the necks, um, calls, evasive or aggressive behaviors. And so some examples of that, when on the nest, relax versus stress. So the bottom right-hand photo shows the head down on the nest. Um, this is a posture that you do not want to see, and it means you are very, you are too close to the loon, and the loon is feeling really anxious and getting ready to slip off the nest into the water, which would leave the eggs in a really vulnerable um, situation to predation or um, any other threats that are currently on the lake. And so what you want to look for are the loons on the upper left-hand corner. They're kind of just more relaxed on their nest, surveying their territory, um, not in that stressed, anxious position. And then also on the water, you can see relaxed versus stressed. And so relaxed, like the, as David mentioned, the chicks are riding the loons back. And um, in the stress position, they're doing what's called the penguin dance. And sometimes I think um, some normal behavior like preening or um, fishing can sometimes be confused with this behavior, but with the penguin dance, they're in a very dominant like S shape with its head pulled back and the flippers are hidden the water out in front in a very rapid motion. And so um, on the water concern, concern can be a bit more tricky, um, but I like to think of it as like the neck is way more elongated and alert and the head is squared off. Um, and it doesn't mean you have to move away, but you want to watch for signs of agitation or increase in stress signals. So signs of escape diving, swimming away, um, and the penguin dance, like all of those indicators you should look out for in vocalizations. And with that said, not every indicator um, indicates, not every behavior indicates distress. And so some behaviors are normal, like parts of preening that I mentioned. Um, they'll just like clean their feathers or they'll lay on their side and clean. Sometimes they're foraging or sometimes they're just stretching or exercising their winds. And in this case, sometimes they're telling the kids some tales of some fish or whatever fun event went on that day. And so next steps. And so first we want to make sure we completed a lake assessment at your lake. And so We've been reaching out to various lakes, um, and if we have not yet, we will be. Or if you wanna contact us, if you have any questions about scheduling or anything, that is fine too, but we're in the midst of scheduling everyone. So we wanna complete this lake assessment so we can determine um, which type of raft would be most beneficial based off your territory threats, and we can assess the lake conditions. Um, and then you can also, contact me, David, or Olivia to schedule a raft deployment date if you are cleared for one. Um, and that's our email below. And then as Tracy mentioned earlier, depending upon where you are in Maine, um, some of you will be working with Maggie Welch. And also um, if you worked with Maine Lakes um, last year, this year you'll be working with Maine Autobahn. Um, so yeah, we'll continue getting in touch with everyone and then we can deploy the rafts and the fun begins with the monitoring. And thank you so much for everyone coming to this webinar because none of this would be possible and this project could not be completed with any of the volunteers. And so we really appreciate all like the hard work and hours like you put into this project. It's greatly appreciated and we are all just very excited for the season. Thank you. All right, and I guess we'll look at thank the you, Tony. Right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I've been answering a lot of questions along the way, um, but uh, we can also unmute you if, if uh, so. It, yeah, if anyone has wants to raise their hand, you can do that, and we can unmute you, um, or we can yeah continue to answer more questions by Q and A. Okay, Mary, let's see. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Um, we're on Cobbacy, which I think last summer had 88 loons, and we did have a couple of rafts. 
but we weren't involved. So we're just wondering, how do we get started? Like, is there a team captain on the lake or something so that we're not there all- There of- is, yeah. So I, I won't say who that is just for privacy reasons, but I will send you. Yeah, she, she'll be very happy to hear from you and to work with you. So right. uh, yeah, there's a, a big training program going on on Kabasi this year. Um, and so right. and it's just, it's gonna be happening um, in mid-May just because the organizer is out of state for a while. <laughs> We know who she is. No, you don't have to oh, send good. her. Yeah, we're, okay. We're, she's one Great. who recruited us, but. Um. <laughs> yes. and she's gone, she just confirmed that. Great. Okay. Yeah, so, she, so we are planning, we're going to have a meeting and we'll be at the Lake Association. David's going to be presenting at the Lake Association meeting okay. as well. Great. Oh, great. Great. That's Looking the meeting. Closer. That's the meeting in June. But you're saying there'll be another meeting in May before that. Yeah. Yeah. It'll just be a Zoom, it sounds like. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Well, so we'll wait to hear from her and see David then. Thanks. Great. Yeah, to thanks. Yeah, yes, glad to have you involved. <laughs> great. It's a great crew to work with. All right. Anybody else? Oh, it looks like, yeah, Mark. Yeah. And thanks, Mark, for coming if you're still on. Oh, well, great. Yeah. Here we, yeah. So it looks like, oh, David, did you have something you wanted to say? I saw a couple raised hands go up down on the bottom. Oh, you did? Okay. Sure. Let's. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay, Bill here. Hopefully I'm not going out of order, but uh, Bill, can you, are you unmuted now? We've actually got, Tracy, we have Alan Brown was okay. first. So, Alan, I'm not sure if you can unmute yourself. Yep, I'm unmuted. Hi, Alan. Great talking to you again. Yeah. Yeah. No, I enjoy, I'm enjoying the presentation, learning a lot. Yeah, we talked earlier in the week. So great. Do you have a do you have a comment or a question? I told you I'm enjoying the presentation. <laughs> okay, that's great. Okay, that's <laughs> awesome. Great. Okay, I just want to make sure we didn't yeah, cut you off early. <laughs> Next, we have William or Bill. Bill. Am, Hi. Am Hi, am I muted? <laughs> no, we can hear you. Oh, good. Uh, I was wondering if anybody uses video cams to monitor balloon rafts with, a, with, the, uh, with the video cam right on the raft itself. We do have um, game cameras, so they're not quite the same as a, a webcam where you're getting that real time imaging, um, but we do put the, them out and then we can collect the SD cards. And the, it has been really informative where we put them out. We have a limited number of them, but um, it, it catches a lot of the things that just weekly monitoring can't. So yeah, so if you're interested for China Lake, that would yeah, be happy. Well, I know a lot of the uh, China Lake Association members would be interested. Um, Great. Can we yeah, these, these put cameras our on one of them? <laughs> What's that? Oh yeah, so we, yeah, we can see. Yeah, I think we still have one or two available. So yeah, happy to put you on there. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, and they they do have capacity to video. We just find that it uses up the SD card and the batteries too quickly. So we set them just to still photos. Okay, but you can still Thanks. get some fantastic photos um, and some really great observation stuff that you would never see um, when you're out on the. On the lake so it's a really cool way of checking out and seeing our loons okay terrific okay chip it looks like you're next Hi. okay can you hear me yes okay i'm from alamo lake association oh great and very nice presentation and i will be looking forward to see you on May 5th, I believe it is. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We're, uh, we'll make a set up a time to meet, I'm sure. So, yeah. Thank you yep. for your presentation. Great. I'm glad you'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. We're excited that, you know, we just recently made contact and yeah, with your lake. So, very excited. And we'll, yeah, we'll be there on a grand tour of that area. <laughs> and I will have a 12 foot aluminum boat available. Great. Okay. Yeah. And we'll come equipped with kayaks and canoes. 
All right. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Let's see, I see a few more. So looks like Paul Green is was up the next one. I think Barry has another question. Okay. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah. So this is actually Joanne, Barry's wife. Um okay. I manage the newsletter for our Lake Association. And I think in the past our leader was able to get photos of loans for me to use in the newsletter. So if we want to tell everybody that there's a big event coming up or an educational opportunity, the photos help to bring it to life. Is it possible to get a couple of photos of adult loons with the chicks in that downy stage, either on the back or in the water right next to mom? It's just when, when they're cute like that, I think it helps to draw attention in a big newsletter to this type of article. Right, let me get in, in touch with our communications director and yeah, just find out how our permissions work on that. Yeah, but yeah. I think it'll probably work out just fine. And Sally, if you're still on, you might be able to answer that as well, better than I can. Do you want me to send you my email? So if you learn something, you can just let me know offline. I'm going to put it in the chat. Yeah, you can just send it. Yeah, you can, you can just do it. Um, instead of putting it out to everyone, you can just uh, send it to us, to the panelists. How do I want to oh, announce okay. it. In the chat on the panelists, okay. Yep. Thank you. And then just we'll see it. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for getting the word out there to people. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. And then, yeah, so now we unmute Paul. Hi. Hi. How are you? I just, I really am enjoying this. Uh, you, you three guys are just just fun to watch and okay. just, uh, but you were fun to meet the other day we enjoyed it <laughs> yeah it's fun Maureen. i guess what i really was just asking i understood everything that you were saying i did was just asking if we had it set up right we're not extremely computer illiterate here i just want to make sure that i can hear that you guys can hear me and i can hear you and i hear you fine Great. So yeah, we can okay? hear you loud and clear. We did it good. All right. <laughs> you did it good. Yeah. Yes, I feel I feel good now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and thanks for sending all the pictures. Of, yeah, of the day we met up with you, they, they were fantastic. Yeah, kind of chomping at the bit to get it in. <laughs> That's great. We still got a lot of ice. So are we. <laughs> yeah. We got our first one out, which helped to yeah. uh, quell that chomping at the bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, it looks like we're at one, so we're happy to answer a few more questions. But yeah, I just really want to thank you all for coming. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to stay on, I'm happy to stay. Um, but yeah, we're really looking forward to working with you and getting the mantra. I know it's a little different than last year, so we'd love your feedback again this year on how. The monitoring goes we tried to we changed a lot based on feedback last year from all of you and hopefully in a way that works well for you oh it looks like we do have two new messages so yeah so i'll just hold on okay most people are just saying thanks yeah thank you paul did you have another question no no we are all set great okay well, take care, everybody, and we will see you out on the lakes and ponds. And let us know if you have any difficulties getting your survey forms. We'll bring, when we come to do um, a raft deployment or help put up signs, we will bring monitoring sheets with us printed out, but you can also get them on the website. Excellent. Excellent. Great. OK. I didn't know you could hear that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we can mute you if you want. <laughs> okay, I'll mute you, but you can unmute yourself if you want to. <laughs> yeah, I think someone was asking too. I think this the this is recorded as well. There should be a, a way to access this, and the chat I think is also recorded. So if there's anything that you saw pop up there that you wanted to check out, any of those links, um, those also should be there too. Um, I think.
Um, don't quote me on that, but Johanna, do you know any other about that? You can email I'm us well. working on trying to save it right now, but for okay. some reason it's not letting me. But I will. Oh um, no! Try and <laughs> if we need to. Stay I can on. send out an email if it's easier, more organized for everybody. That what's that? Oh, if yeah. it's easier for everybody to have like an organized list of the links, we can send out an email afterwards so they oh. don't have to go through the whole chat. That sounds great. But I'll keep my fingers crossed that we can get this <laughs> the recording saved. The recording is saved. Recording's great. I just the chat. Oh, okay, got it. Perfect. Okay, good. All right. All right. Well, unless yeah, unless there are additional questions, let's see. I do see one. They want another one in the. Oh no, looks all good. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay, so I'll sign it off here. And yeah, thank you so much, everyone. And yeah, well, if we haven't been in touch yet. We will be soon, but also encourage you to contact us and I'll probably bring you up on our calendar list. Thank you, everyone. We really appreciate having you here and we look forward to seeing you soon. Take it um, easy. Thank you. <laughs>